First generation military should be celebrated. Hey, I am Chuck the bureaucrat and the army has a recruiting problem. In fact, they've had a recruiting problem for a long time. And there's one particular aspect of this problem that gets a lot of attention, but not a lot of action. Americans are far more likely to join the military if they have a family member who has served. And this is by no means a secret. I mean, Time Magazine has done an article on it, the New York Times has written about it, and it even came up in General McConville's confirmation hearing. As many as 79% of all new recruits have a family member who has served. But what that means is that somebody who has a family member who served in the military, well, they're far more likely to join. And that's amazing. I mean, you would think that if there was this dramatic difference in propensity between these two groups of people, that there would be a serious effort to understand why and to do something about it. But as far as I can tell, there's just this vague effort to resurrect old recruiting and kind of half-heartedly remind veterans that, hey, you should encourage people to join the military. There doesn't seem to be real consideration of what message family members could be giving somebody about military service that causes this huge difference. I think I know what the message is, and I think I know what to do about it. But before we get into that, just consider the deal that the Army offers a 17 to 18 year old. Enter into an eight year contract, and we will make you part of an organization that is completely alien to you. <laughs> I mean, who signs an eight year contract? Your cell phone contract isn't that long. You can't get a car loan that's that long. Maybe some musicians have a contract like that, but even professional athletes don't sign such lengthy contracts. And at least those guys have a much better understanding of what they're contracting for. They're going to be doing something that they already know they're good at. So if you don't have a family member telling you whatever this special message is, you really only have two sources of information, army recruiters and movies. And to be honest, neither of these are particularly trustworthy. And I'll go a little further about whatever special message it is that causes such a distinct difference in propensity. It's not in movies and it doesn't come from recruiters because if it did, this difference wouldn't even exist in the first place. So what is the message? Well, I argue it is not a set of words. It's actually a set of experiences. Recruits with family members who've served, especially parents, they know what they're signing up for. They've lived in the houses, they've gone to the schools, They've eaten at the food court and shopped at the PX. They saw their parents come home every night after work. And in some cases, they even went to work with their parents, particularly going to PT sessions. They have friends who are military children, so they've gotten a glimpse of the best and the worst that military life has to offer. So when it comes time for that military child to sign an eight year contract, they at least know what they're getting themselves into. They aren't sitting down with Satan to sign away their soul. They have a basic understanding. And frankly, this means that the recruiter is a lot less mysterious. They're able to make informed choices that make them much more likely to be successful in the long term. I mean, just think about picking a, a military occupation specialty. The kid with family members who are prior service is far more likely to select a job that's a good fit and to understand what the job really involves. And when the soldiers show up at basic training, you can bet that the military children have a pretty good idea about what to expect. And meanwhile, the first generation military people, they got no idea what's about to happen. So what? What can we do about it? Well, I argue that the propensity is so low among first generation military because of a lack of information and the intimidating nature of the contract. And you're not going to close that gap with 30 second ad spots. 
you have to show it to them. What you have to do is you have to change the contract. You have to create a way for that first generation military service member to experience military life without signing away his whole future. Here's what I would do. I would create three categories of recruits, each with a different option for how they can leave the military. The first category is just military children. If your parents served in the military in the last 10 years, you get the standard contract. The next one is family service member. These are the folks who have a vet somewhere in the family tree. They get the same eight year contract as everybody else, but they also get an option to walk away at any point during basic training. No harm, no foul. Let them get a taste of military service with no risk. The third category are these first generation military service members. They get the same eight year contract, but their option to walk away from the military, that, that time period that they can leave after they've gotten the experience, it's a little longer, say six months into their first duty station. Now look, I have not laid out the most comprehensive, fully thought out plan here, but consider these points. First, if the Army is not meeting its mission, that means that Congress budgeted for the Army to recruit, train, and PCS the full mission. So if you give these first generation soldiers a, a safe way to learn if the military is really right for them, isn't that better than getting no recruits at all? Second, the next time you hear some Army leader bemoaning the fact that there's this growing gap between those who serve and those who don't, you got to ask yourself, what are they actually doing to close the gap? I mean, it starts to feel like they kind of like that the gap exists. In the meantime, check out this video to see what the Army gets wrong about the Army Combat Fitness Test and its role in building the most powerful army in the world.